let's sh shift our focus tonight and, uh, and the direction of our conversation as a Nigerian delegation has left for the United Kingdom uh, to discuss with legal teams on strategies dealing with the recent development regarding the PNID uh, contract judgment. The Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Mr. Abubakar Malami, has uh, said that they have left for UK on this strategic tour. According to the minister, he said, quote, all cards are on the table, but it all depends on the beneficial that has potency for setting aside the award, having regards to the applicable law in the circumstances. Mr. Malami said, no possibility is ruled out, including possibility of filling or filing rather new case and or using existing proceedings to seek relief of uh, setting aside the award of the contract cannot be ruled out. Last week, the Federal High Court in Abuja ordered the Process and Industrial Development Limited, P&ID, to wind up operations in Nigeria and forfeit its properties to the federal government. Justice Inyang Ekwa gave the order following the arraignment of the companies on Thursday by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Another is, uh, he said was given for the second convict to be wound up and its asset forfeited to the federal government. And on Friday, the day after, a former director of legal services in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources was arraigned before a high court of the Federal Capital Territory. The arraignment is coming barely 24 hours after the conviction, conviction of the PNID by the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court on economic sabotage, money laundering, and tax evasion, amongst others. We have joining us from our Abuja studio uh, to get insight on this. Uh, perhaps a case that started around the time that he was the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice. We have in our Abuja studio, Mr. Mike Andwaka. Thank you so much, Mr. Andwaka, for coming on tonight. Let me get your view, show, you a, a brief one, before we go on this break. How would you react to perhaps some of the convictions that have come on this case in Nigeria? Well, the evidence was there. Some of them pleaded guilty, and they were convicted. So if somebody was convicted based on the fact that he pleaded guilty, there's nothing you can say about it again. He has been convicted. Mr. Adwaka, we'll take a breather, but when we come back, I'd like to ask you a few questions around, because we understand that this deal came up in 2010. You were still in office around that time. Your knowledge of it and what do you think the federal government should be doing? We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll look at that and many more. Join us again, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. We're talking about the PNID uh, case against Nigeria, the deal that went bad. Whether or not uh, top officials in government at the time were aware of this deal and what really happened, uh, a company that was said to have been set up uh, in the Cayman's Island and the British uh, Cayman's Island and perhaps set up purposely because of the deal that was signed at the time, which we understand started around 2010, signed in 2012, and became a very big one. And the fear that Nigeria might lose over 9 billion US dollar worth of assets to that company after a UK court gave a judgment. So the federal government's uh, delegation is in the United Kingdom. The Attorney General, former Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice at the time, around about that time, uh, in the years of uh, former President, later Mr. Yeradua, uh, Mr. Mike Andwaka uh, is on the program tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Andwaka, for your time on the program. You did say on a sister program on, the, uh, on, the, uh, on this station that that kind of contract could have, I mean, should have gone through the Infrastructure Concession Commission and by law should have been signed off by the uh, Federal Executive Council, should have been approved by the Federal Executive Council. From some of the information that is on the table at a time, would you say, Ms. Andwaka, that you are not aware at all of what happened or transpired about this case at all? Yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> a, I wasn't aware of it. Because the only way I could have been aware of it if the matter was brought to the 
Federal Executive Council. And naturally, an agreement can only be done after an approval of the Federal Executive Council. If the matter came through due process, came through, as I did say, Infrastructure Regulatory Commission, and came to the Federal Executive Council based on a no objection certificate issued by Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, and it was approved by Federal Executive Council because the law said approval of the Federal Executive Council didn't say approval of the President. If it came, after then, it would have been forwarded to the Ministry of Justice for us to vet and profile a workable agreement for that. That did not come to Federal Executive Council, I've been issued. So would you say uh, largely no uh, from, from the information that we have now, it was something that started in the Yaradua uh, administration in 2010, uh, dovetail somehow, and the conversations were going on until uh, the Jonathan era, and uh, it escalated badly afterwards. What came out to you when this case came up? Some of the fact that we know that the public is not aware of that you can tell us tonight, Mr. Andwaka. Well, if there's two things that I have to let you know. The company that actually approached federal government in 2008 was P and ID of Nigeria, a company incorporated under the laws of Nigeria. They signed an MOU. Even that MOU, were, the MOU was for them to, to commence discussions with the federal government. That was 2008. That had not reached the level of a contract. Now, I am very surprised that the company that eventually signed the purported agreement ended up to be a company in Virgin Island, British Virgin Island. Therefore, even if the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission was due, carrying a due process, it was based on the fact that the company, they were treating their case or their interest in doing unsolicited a job with federal government was a Nigerian company. So that is another area that everybody will have to look at it. How come that a company that came into Nigeria was organized or incorporated under the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here in, two, here in Nigeria around two, just uh, about 2007 or 2006? We now eventually signed an MOU with the federal government for an unsolicited contract that they can do this, they can do this, as a Nigerian company. But then in 2010, a Virgin Island company will come and sign. That is a, it's a very strange development. And I think the federal government team is aware of it now. They have gone to London with that new development. I think the papers have been ready. I also seen the contract of 2008 which I also did not know anything about it anyway. But the MOU was signed in 2008 when I was the Attorney General. But well, an MOU Mr. Is Andraka, uh, I mean, how did this get so bad that things have gone this, and it, it, it has involved and it has dragged the nation, the whole country, along, and this deal was signed by some people. What do you think went wrong that this could have uh, escalated and degenerated this badly? Something, something that somebody is somewhere trying to play smart. I believe the people, the P and ID people are trying to play smart. They never came to Nigeria as a company from Virgin Island, a foreign company coming to invest in Nigeria. They came as a Nigerian company, supporting Nigerian government to work a business relation through an MOU. And then for them to switch over as a virgin company, is things that are uh, extremely very strange. Again, I believe uh, uh, yeah, they bother yeah. around issues of fraud. Uh, okay, so another they issue. Seriously, on the issue of fraud. And these are the new facts because say, when this matter came out, all you were hearing of was Virgin Island Company signed an agreement with Nigerian government in, 20, in 2010. I think that's what you heard. But I'm giving you an insight again that the same company 
having a similar name, P and ID Nigerian Limited, signed an MOU here in 2008. So uh, I could not see how the same company will suddenly become a company based in Virgin Island, organized under the laws of the Virgin Island. So now, uh, from your experience, Mr. Ndwaka, g give us uh, uh, what could have, what could happen, the implication of this, to the $9 billion that was, uh, because in the eye of the UK court, Nigeria has failed in the, on their own part uh, on this deal. The, the, uh, uh, the delegation of, from Nigeria are in the United Kingdom. What options are on the table for Nigeria uh, as they look to obtain this UK judgment? Well, there's a very compact case organized by very competent lawyers led by the Attorney General down their way to UK. And a lot of wide consultation has been made. Convictions have been done. And at least the conviction being done is based on the fact that P and ID company of Nigerian Limited pledged guilty to certain allegations. Those are the basis on which fraud will be established in UK. There's further elements. I don't want to prejudge their actions, but the people, uh, the P and ID were to get land from Cross River. I don't know whether they ever even apply for certificate of occupancy on any, any land in Cross River State. That is a new additional evidence that can be brought there. How would you have? Uh, how can you initiate a project when you were to acquire land? Federal government responsibility under the purported agreement was to supply gas to you, but the land itself you have no title. So how could federal government have supplied the the gas to where? Okay, so that maybe is a new development which is, uh, which has come out. So a lot of things are coming out, which looks every pointing to the fact that this was a very okay. smart fraud. And, uh, Mr. Andwaka, uh, help us to uh, anchor on this one, and um, is the fact that the case in uh, in the Nigerian court, how will it help the case in the UK court? Some of the information that are coming in. Um, is there a strong possibility the that Nigeria we might we, uh, we might forfeit any property uh, over this matter, uh, an, uh, an international property belonging to Nigeria over this matter? If you anchor on that one, yeah, Nigerian court decisions have always been helpful. This is not the first time. There was a, a judgment against an arbitral award against NNPC of uh, almost two point something billion. And NAPC thought that that arbitral award was uh, predicated on illegal transaction. They approached the Federal High Court here in Nigeria to set aside the award, which was rightly set aside. And the matter went to you, United States. And of course, the argument of the Nigerian uh, team in United, United States was that there was no award to enforce. It went to the District Court of New York. And they agreed with the Nigerian position and set aside the, the, the uh, uh, action okay. which was based to garnish Nigerians' account on the fact that there was nothing to enforce. Here we have co got okay. concrete evidence of fraud. People have been convicted. More facts are coming. The issue of P and ID, Nigerian Limited, has just come for the first time. It was never introduced in the United Kingdom. They are not aware that a similar company Bearing the same resemblance, entered an MOU with the federal government on the same transaction. That is going to come out for the first time in the United All right. Kingdom, and that is, is going to be a, a sway a lot to the court, to the court in the United Kingdom. How is that possible? How could it be possible that a similar company will be pursuing the same objective? Okay, we, we, we have to leave, we, we have to hang on that, uh, Mr. Andwaka. I must sincerely thank you for coming on the program tonight, former Attorney General of the Federation and former Minister of Justice, Mr. Mike Andwaka. Thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. That's our show tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shawn Kimale. Bye bye.